Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Canadian Prairie. I'm Andrew Pritchard, meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Well, we continue to watch a pattern here that's favoring above average temperatures here across the Canadian Prairie, not always scorching warmth. Of course, it is January, and we're talking about, you know, just a few degrees above average at times, but certainly, again, better than the alternative of the last couple of weeks. Now, the pattern is going to dictate uh, that a lot of moisture is wrung out here across the western uh, portions of Canada here, across British Columbia, coastal and high elevation areas there, and then across parts of the, uh, the Pacific Northwest of the U.S. Much of the prairie here going to be mostly dry here, though we do have some opportunities for some accumulating snow, mostly across central Alberta, getting into central Saskatchewan. We have a couple systems we'll talk about in this region, but again, not talking about any significant crippling snows here over the next five to seven days. So take a look at the satellite animation this morning. Again, we can see one little upper level low piece of a disturbance here that's going to actually slide off to the south and east, impacting our uh, region down here in the Midwest of the United States as we head into the next two to three days. So we take a look at the radar picture again, some snow falling in the Edmonton area, uh, some snow continuing across portions of uh, east central Saskatchewan, and then some snow as, as well across parts of uh, southern and central Saskatchewan. Uh, and again, this is the disturbance here that's going to bring uh, the best chance or the, the biggest accumulations here as we talk about the, the next five to six days as a whole. We can watch that here with the high resolution Canadian model timing this out. Lost connection to my mouse. That's OK. I'm sure it will reconnect here shortly. We don't need it. It's just a bit of a distraction. We'll watch the, um, the, the precipitation here kind of sliding through central uh, uh, Alberta. Uh, and then into uh, southern and central Saskatchewan as we head through the overnight hours into early morning on Thursday before it begins to uh, really be eroded and kind of uh, lose the moisture. So uh, tapering off as we head into the day on Thursday. Uh, the forecast amounts here from the high resolution Canadian model here, a peak of maybe six to eight centimeters of snow here in a very local area here across parts of uh, south central uh, and central uh, Alberta and then really tapering off as it gets into uh, portions of south central Saskatchewan, maybe just a trace in those areas. Now again, the pattern here is going to favor a trough in the Gulf of Alaska that's going to continue to pump uh, storm systems into the region uh, with very strong onshore flow across, uh, again, portions of British Columbia and the Pacific Northwest. So I'll play this loop. You'll see the very strong jet stream winds blasting this region. And then we'll talk about what kind of uh, what the precipitation pattern look like, looks like there. So again, the trough just spinning away here in the Gulf of Alaska, continuing to blast this region here uh, with very strong jet stream winds. As we do so, again, a lot of precipitation accumulating here in coastal and high elevation areas from uh, British Columbia down into uh, Washington and Oregon. As we talk about the U.S., even portions of Northern California benefiting from some of that precipitation. But much of that uh, moisture is wrung out here, again, over the, the high elevation areas of the Rockies. And so we do see some opportunities for some light precipitation, some snow accumulating here, but it's not a pattern that's going to, uh, again, be bringing in, um, you know, crippling uh, winter storms to the region. The other active area continues to be the subtropical jet across portions of the U.S. So uh, two corridors here that continue to be very active, and that is across uh, parts of the, uh, the, the Midwest into the southern U.S., and then, again, uh, coastal and high elevation areas of British Columbia into Washington and Oregon. So as we just look at the five-day averaged height anomaly pattern here on the left, and then the precipitation anomaly pattern over here on the right, the seven-day forecast, again, you see the very heavy precipitation in this area, coastal areas and high elevation areas of British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon, and then near average or on the dry side as you head over toward the prairie. So much of that moisture not making it into the prairie. So we talk about total snow forecast over the next week. Uh, you know, in the Calgary area, probably you're talking about maybe no snow to maybe a trace of snow, Medicine Hat, probably a trace of snow, Edmonton, 5 to 10 centimeters, uh, Saskatoon in the 2 to 5 centimeter range, Regina, a little bit less there, trace to 2 centimeters, and same thing as we get over toward Winnipeg, as you kind of look at some of the different ideas here, the European on the, the left, the uh, American GFS model on the right, and then the Canadian model here uh, with a bit of a different orientation. But same thing uh, goes here as you kind of uh, digest these. And then these are the forecast amounts that I would expect uh, over the next seven days. Temperature is going to continue to bounce around between maybe 4 to 10 degrees warmer than average. The highest spot or the, uh, the most anomalously warm area here across the north and eastern portions of the prairie, uh, but still over towards uh, Alberta, southern and central Alberta, 4 to 8 degrees warmer than average. So talk about what that looks like here in terms of temperatures here. Calgary above freezing for your highs as we talk about the next 10 days with those lows only a couple of degrees below zero. Edmonton very similar hovering right around freezing as we talk about highs for the next week. 
Saskatoon climbing back up to the freezing mark by the time we get to the weekend and hanging out there as we get into early next week. Similar picture here in Regina, continuing that warm up, peaking over the weekend with highs above freezing and then slowly trailing off into next week. As you head over toward Winnipeg, the, uh, the uh, warm up is a little bit more delayed and long lasting as we get into the back half of the weekend into early next week with those highs again flirting with the freezing mark.